So, uh, this is going to be my last Peru video. Uh, and I just wanted to share, for those of you who have been watching, uh, at least some of all the gazillion videos I've uploaded that I've made from around the country and from the trip. Uh, whoops, sorry. I wanted to uh, make a final video where I could share some of my thoughts about uh, what I saw and experienced as we traveled through Peru and basically about Peru as a country and as a destination. Um, we spent two weeks there. It's in uh, the last two weeks of March 2012. We traveled around the country from Lima and southwards back to Lima from down in Ica. Uh, then to Arequipa uh, by plane from Lima. And from Arequipa, the rest of the trip was made by car uh, from uh, Arequipa to Puno, uh, first uh, through, uh, sorry, to Chivay and to the Colt Canyon, then uh, from Chivay to Puno, from Puno to Cusco, and from Cusco, of course, around various parts, the Valle Sagrado, uh, Machu Picchu, place like that. Then we flew back to Lima, and from there uh, to Quito in Ecuador. Um, I can really recommend Peru as a holiday destination. Uh, I thought it was wonderful to travel there. Um, it's the kind of country where you basically get everything, in, well not in one place, but in one country, because it's so big uh, and so varied. I mean obviously compared to Russia, it's not that big, but it has a huge variation in the kind of destinations you can go to. There's uh, big cities, or at least one big city, like Lima. There are smaller cities. I loved Arequipa personally and enjoyed Cusco too, uh, where you can sort of get to know the place more easily. Uh, there is the history of the place, going back centuries, uh, to the arrival of the Spaniards, before that the Incas, and even before that, uh, ancient histories and traditions from various um, native tribes. Nazca was an amazing place. Uh, there's desert, oases in the desert, there's beach life, you can go surfing, you can go swimming, sunbathing, whatever. Um, from there to mountains and rainforest, just a huge variation so that whatever you're interested in seeing or doing, you're probably going to find something to your taste in Peru. Um, the people that we met were very friendly very helpful, uh, easy to talk to, get along with. Um, the biggest problem was that a lot of people didn't speak a lot of English. We were lucky to have uh, local guides in all the cities we visited. And they of course spoke English, but when you met people around, um, they would often not speak a lot of English. I do speak a little Spanish and that was very helpful. Uh, but overall, people are very friendly, was my impression. Uh, happy to see tourists and eager to help. So. Peruvian people uh, we had only good experiences with, uh, apart from <laughs> some uh, airport cops and security at Cusco airport where they took my friend aside and looked through her luggage uh, and also they did not speak a lot of English so that was kind of tricky. Um, but that apparently happens a lot with tourists in Cusco, I wonder why. Uh, anyway, basically people were friendly and helpful. Um, the food was good. and. No problem finding things to eat. We're not vegetarians. I don't know if that makes it probably makes it easier since uh, meat and fish are uh, probably a big part, at least from what we understood, important in Peruvian cuisine. But we enjoy the food. I uh, ate a lot of good meals there. Uh, generally, of course, there is a lot of poverty around Peru. And this is something that I wanted to say something about because I have traveled to quite a few countries over the years and I've seen quite a lot of poverty uh, and there wasn't anything exceptional about what we saw in Peru on that score uh, and we knew that there are problems uh, with poverty and with deprived areas. Uh, but what we saw uh, was something that I, I can't really say that I've seen that anywhere else and it was very appealing because what we would see would be we would uh, be in towns or villages, pass through or visit uh, where there was a lot of poverty, where you could tell that people were really struggling. But in all of these places, there would be a few things 
that were really nice, like impressively nice. And unlike some other places you can go to where there are also some nice things in every, or mostly every, uh, poor village, you know, uh, that'll be like, the church will be fantastic. And the priest's house, the vicar's house, will look great and be kind of luxurious. And then everyone else is living in this grinding poverty. But in Peru, what was so sweet that I loved seeing was that the things that were really, really nice, like the things that made you stop and think, wow, that's fantastic, were the things that were, first of all, for the children. The schools and kindergarten. True, and it was just such a desolate place, you know, dust blowing in the streets and mangy dogs wandering around and I thought, oh my god, imagine growing up here, it must be just so difficult and there's nothing for a kid here. And then we turned a corner and there was this huge playground, like fantastic playground, wonderfully kept up and just beautiful. And that was something that we saw a lot, schools and kindergartens and playgrounds were like the main focus. Of, that's where obviously the resources went because those things looked so good even in really poor places and the second thing that looked good was the things that everyone could use uh, the Plaza de Armas which is the main square that would often look good again in really poor towns that's where everyone can congregate and where important village or town events happen and another thing that was often really well built, well constructed, and beautifully kept up and obviously used was uh, like sports arenas. Swimming, you know, obviously we didn't see indoors, this was things we drove by, but obviously like public swimming pools uh, and sports courts like for baseball or football, i.e. soccer, um, things like that. Sorry, did I say baseball? I meant of course basketball. Sorry, I'm not into sports. Uh, I barely know what they're called in my own language. Uh, basketball courts, we saw a lot of those. And football courts, soccer, uh, and things like that, that from what we could see were used, uh, some of them would be in connection with schools, but obviously open to the public outside of school hours, and some were just public courts for everyone to use. And you would see all kinds of people hang around there playing sports, and those things would be just really well kept up and maintained. And it was so interesting to see that. Uh, and one time we also saw like an arena, like a little concert arena, or you could have town meetings there or whatever. And that also was well constructed, well kept up and all of that. And that, I have to say, that's what really has stayed with me for my tour of Peru. Is that there was a lot of poverty and people obviously didn't have a lot. But you could tell that the areas where they had sort of focused the resources that was on what the kids would use and what everyone could use. Uh, and yeah, there were some places where the churches were fantastic also, but that was mostly where the churches were really old, like, you know, 1740, whatever. Of course, if you've managed to keep that still standing in an earthquake-prone area for 300, 250 years, uh, yeah, that's going to be an impressive church, obviously. but. It wasn't like, that's where we focus the resources now, no. Uh, Peruvian people who, at least to tourists like us, were very helpful and friendly and kind, um, I think have totally the right focus um, elsewhere too, among themselves. Because playgrounds and schools and kindergartens and shared sport courts and squares, that's where they seem to focus their resources. And I loved seeing that. Uh, and. Yeah, that really it's really gonna stay with me. In addition to just the all the fantastic things we saw, Machu Picchu was amazing, of course, um, and just the natural beauty of Peru, the beautiful countryside, uh, the forests, the mountains, the desert was spectacular. Uh, so much to see and so little time to do it in. I could have stayed longer easily. Um, it was a beautiful country with wonderful people. 
Uh, I'm very happy that I got the chance to go there and I really recommend it. And keep your eyes open. If anyone else has been there and has the same impression I do about this whole thing where community resources are focused, or if you know anything more about that, then I would love to hear from you in the comments because I thought that was wonderful to see and it really made uh, the trip to Peru uh, special to me in a lot of ways. So, if you have the chance, go to Peru. I recommend it. Thank you for watching and thank you for watching any of my other Peruvian videos, like the 150 or however many there are. Um, I had a lot of fun making them. I know there's a lot, but uh, there is a lot to see in Peru. So, thank you for watching.